How you doing, you old pirates? Welcome back to the channel. I just got done recording my reaction to Star Wars Hot Takes on Reddit Part 2, and I came to close some stuff out on YouTube because I was playing music in the background, and I saw this video, and it it, it intrigued me. I, I haven't heard a lot about Star Wars theory uh, in a while just because like I don't really pay attention to Star Wars stuff on YouTube that much anymore. Um, the last time I actually kept up with Star Wars theory, I think it was Last Jedi going into The Rise of Skywalker, and I it, it, I fell off because, like, the content he made at the time, it that was the stuff that I was into. As you all probably know, like, the lore, the fan films, the fan fics, whatever. But honestly, too, the, a bunch of Star Wars channels were popping up around that time, and I just, like, everything was starting to get lost in the woodwork. Anyway, uh, I don't really know a lot of the Twitter drama other than like he got into it with someone who interviewed Leslie Headland, and I'm not going to go and read a Twitter thread. That's not what this is about. I saw this video saying I hate Star Wars theory and it, it intrigued me because again, I haven't heard a lot about him and I'm like the acolyte controversy. Maybe this will explain what's going on with the acolyte and Star Wars theory. Um, so this is by Mo Magic and I, uh, oh damn. 300 dislikes and 100 likes. Um, so we'll check the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, comments are turned off, so I guess we won't check the comments afterwards. And then the description is Star Wars Theory is a grifting scumbag with too big of a fan base who derives off getting thrills by hating Star Wars unnecessarily, and I'm sick of it. Uh, can someone explain to me exactly what grifting is? Because like I, I've heard so many definitions that I'm not sure what it is anymore. Anyway. I'm hoping this will explain what's going on with the Acolyte drama and Star Wars theory so I can be up to speed and I'll give my reactions as we go along. So if you don't like the pausing, I, I apologize. This video will contain spoilers for the finale of Star Wars The Acolyte. So if you haven't seen the show, make sure you go watch it and then come back to this video. Calling yourself a Star Wars fan in 2024 is really shooting yourself in the leg. As most of the Star Wars fans these days will defend this low IQ take of Disney Star Wars isn't canon. Yeah, bud, sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night knowing Disney literally had to resuscitate this otherwise dormant franchise the only thing that came out from the end of the clone wars and the force awakens was toys nothing else there is not one more annoying prick than i could hate more in this star wars community than star wars theory himself one of the biggest star wars fans i've ever seen this guy's a fucking loser <laughs> the newest i really like i said i hope this is a critique of like what's going on with star wars theory and the acolyte and not just like a shit talking session, because like that's not really what I'm here for, but we'll continue going. This episode of The Acolyte has only been out for a few hours now, and the first thing this annoying dork does after the episode is immediately outright deny that Darth Plagueis is in the episode for like five seconds. Fuck off! That is not Plagueis. But hey, Yoda's there, so. I've seen that. I'm All I'm going to say about Plagueis is it doesn't really do anything for me simply because I'm just not a big Plagueis fan. Like, I know everybody, like, a ton of people love Plagueis. I, <clears throat> I was a Jango Fett fan during the prequels, man. Leave me alone. It has to be cool, right? When Star Wars tries to do something new, all you do is bitch and complain about it. I could never genuinely understand some of the hate that Star Wars gets for some of the things it does. I kind of find it hilarious that a small inbred community of Star Wars fans firmly believe because that Disney assassinated, no pun intended, based on recent events, this franchise, even when they do shit to okay. appease us as fans. Bring Ahsoka back, done. Bring Boba Fett back, done. <sighs> I'll talk about Boba Fett. I'll talk about Boba. It was a really successful group of video games. Done. Okay, so I got to pause it here, right? I got to pause this here because, like, first and foremost, like, I'm just going to say this. We can't call this successful because it hasn't come out. So don't say giving us a group of successful games. Uh, Battlefront 2 had the worst launch in almost any Star Wars game history. No one even thinks about squadrons anymore. These two games are goaded. Like they're they're great. I love them. And then there's Battlefront 2014, 2015, which is dog water and no one remembers. So like you can't really call their game stuff successful. They were good. Hell, I bought Battlefront 2 day one. I bought Battlefront 2 day one, played it all night, played it almost at least three times a month up until uh, this year. Cause I just like, I, I, I have nothing left to unlock, but uh, let's 
you can't really call two out of four, right? Two out of four are successful because this is unknown. This one had a rocky start, and then they cut off uh, they cut off support for it when it could have been legendary, right? Like Clone Wars era content, here's a bunch of it. Okay. Again, Clone Wars era content, like, I, uh, I love the Clone Wars for what it was. We got season seven. I was fine without any more Clone Wars content. But again, you, you can't really, like, Kenobi, again, doing something and then doing something good are two different things, right? You can give us a bunch of Star Wars stuff like we've gotten, but if a lot of it isn't good, people are going to voice their opinions on it. Like, you can't say, you know, the book of Boba Fett was good. It really wasn't. Like, in my opinion, the book of Boba Fett really just kept the character in a stagnant state. He didn't progress throughout the show. He didn't do anything. There's no reason for us to root for Boba Fett. In Mando season two, he had honor and he was badass. Boba Fett stuff. Cool. Great. But what was that in the book of Boba Fett? Again, I can't speak to Ahsoka. I really didn't watch it because I don't care for Ahsoka. Like, she was cool in the Clone Wars. Like, I was more so, like, down with Rex and Wolf and Cody. Um, but, again, doing something and doing something good are two different things. Darth fucking Plagueis, the character we've been waiting to see in live action since Revenge of the Sith. Here you go. Enjoy. Wait, you're going to cry about it? Then what the fuck do you want? But not for real. Disney Star Wars is woke trash that should be decanonized in favor of Star Killer. <laughs> Star Wars theory runs Don't talk shit about Star Killer, damn it. 10 times out of 10 are 40-year-old neckbeards who live at home with their parents and eat Cheetos all day. Cheetos are good, but like come on. Star Wars is fun. Quit making it not fun for the people who actually enjoy it. Blindly hating on a show because it's not what you want and then you go and make some dipshit rhetoric reviews to your Cheeto finger audience about how this isn't Darth Plagueis and that Disney can't do any good. The finale of the Acolyte isn't perfect. It's fun. It's really fun as a matter of fact mm. its pacing can be a bit breakneck at some points well we came to this finale to get closure from the overarching plot we got that we got a really well done lightsaber fight which i gotta give this series some props i disagree i'm just gonna say i disagree with the overarching plot the overarching plot was to get to capture may right and make her answer for the crimes because she was killing jedi and her reasoning for killing jedi is because she was under the impression that the Jedi, if not soul, were the reason for all the people dying or all her witches dying, which realistically wasn't soul or the Jedi. It was May because she started that stupid fire. And if those witches then passed out and weren't dead, well, they're certainly dead from what May did. So May killed all of those ladies and then soul stabbing their mom for whatever reason. He first said it was an accident. He then said it was to protect you. He then said it was to make the right choice. It... The, the show just contradicts itself a whole bunch of times. It really doesn't have any motivation or an identity. And the lightsaber fight, that wire work was woof. The logic behind the fight, like Kamir throwing his only source of weaponry at someone only to run at him and try to punch him in the face when, A, the dude has all the defense in the world, he's got the force, and he's got a weapon. Like, that really just didn't make sense to me. But, again... The overarching plot of the Acolyte was what? Was what? To find out who killed these ladies? Who killed these witches? Yeah. Osha finds out who kills her family and kills the witches and whatnot. And someone who's been prattling on about being good for 16 years suddenly kills the guy who was like a father to her for however long because they really don't specify how long she was actually with the Jedi. And then decides to join this guy who murdered people a bunch of the people that she was down with right in front of her. But again, she's not a hundred percent bad because she decided to join him. If he let her sister go by wiping her mind, but whatever. This is the best Disney star Wars lightsaber fights they have done to date. The fight between soul and Kamir in this episode top notch i loved it we got kyber crystal bleeding which we've only seen so very few times oh yeah and fucking yoda we haven't seen yoda in a live action <sighs> okay again the kyber crystal bleeding thing it was a thing right it was it was there to me i would have loved to see may actually go hog wild rip the crystal out of the saber bleed it but like don't you have to be taught saber or crystal bleeding don't you have to know what it is before you just do it 
And then on top of that, the Yoda thing. Don't get me started. The, the, the Yoda, it's, it was different in The Last Jedi, right? It was different in The Last Jedi because we weren't expecting to see Yoda. And Yoda dropped some dope-ass wisdom. Frank Oz came back. It was some dope stuff, right? Now, The Last Jedi, to me, I, I don't like The Last Jedi, but the stuff with Yoda interacting with Luke again, poetry, poetry. This was a cameo appearance at the last second of the show, and we kind of knew we were going to get Yoda because Yoda's a 1,000 years old. This takes place 100-plus years before the prequels. So, like, it wasn't a issue of are we going to see Yoda. It was an issue of when we were going to see Yoda. So saying, oh, well, we got Yoda in the show, so why are you talking crap on it, really isn't a good argument because, like, we expected to see him. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Series since The Last Jedi. How can you not give them some level of props for that? Oh, right, yeah, because Star Wars fans are fucking miserable pieces of shit. Listen, no franchise is perfect, and Star Wars is definitely not that. It's been imperfect since 1977. I'm a massive fan of some of the biggest imperfected franchises there has ever been. And even for their respective faults, I still love them. The shameful display you put out to your bigoted audience is not only pathetic, but it's gross. Your fans deliberately ruin this shit for other people who actually thoroughly enjoy that the idea of Star Wars is still going almost 50 years later. You know what franchise is doing so poor right now that's been around for roughly the same amount of time? Transformers. And guess what? The fans still love it even though it's been through literal hell and back. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Why consume something if all you're going to do is be a whiny, hateful, and annoying bitch about it? Like, you don't go to a five-star Michelin restaurant like Gordon Ramsay and have the most, like, delectable fucking burger you've ever had and then tell him you're going to take a massive fucking shit. I'm sorry. That's a massive contradiction because this individual just said, Star Wars isn't perfect. It isn't perfect, but just have fun with it. And then compares the Acolyte or Star Wars to a perfect restaurant and or a restaurant you'd expect perfection like a Gordon Ramsay place that's I'm sorry that's a massive contradiction when you just said well oh, Star Wars isn't perfect it's never been perfect I love imperfect stuff that's what makes it great and on the other other subject that was mentioned before this why bitch and moan about why keep watching something if you're just going to bitch and moan about it this is the argument I keep seeing where people are like if you don't like something just don't watch it Every single person who's been watching Star Wars since they were a kid has just as much of right to say what they don't like about it as the people who blindly love everything or just love everything in general, right? Because we've all gone through that struggle of being a Star Wars fan. To me, as long as you're not attacking people, their beliefs, who they are, sending death threats, all that stuff, not being a scummy person, say what you want to say about Star Wars. Every person has just as much of right to watch something. Hell, I didn't like The Acolyte at all, but I kept watching it hoping it would get better, that it would make me like it. I love The Mandalorian Season 1 and 2. I sat through eight episodes of The Mandalorian hoping that Season 3 would be good, and it wasn't. I love Boba Fett. I dropped $3,000 on a cosplay of Boba Fett. I love the character. Can't stand the book of Boba Fett, but I watched every episode hoping it would get better. Again, you can't just say, if you don't like it, don't watch. They're watching it in hopes that they're going to like it. I don't know. But again, the contradiction of saying, don't expect perfection, but you wouldn't go to a Gordon Ramsay restaurant and get something that's delectable and perfect and then shit on it. Like, I'm sorry, the Acolyte is not perfect in any stretch of the imagination. The Acolyte, it, the ratings show that, and not even just the Rotten Tomatoes ratings, but even creators who were taken out by Star Wars, by Lucasfilm, like Grace Randolph, who were talking up the Acolyte up until like the last two episodes, have even said it's not great. Look at the Nielsen ratings for the Acolyte. Like, again... The proof is in more than just what fans are saying. Shit all over the burger and then send it back with your chocolate surprise. Because chances are you'll get suplexed and it'll absolutely be deserved. I'm disappointed you've become such a hack, Star Wars Theory. I was a fan of yours at one point during the Force Awakens era of this franchise. But no, <laughs> not anymore. You're an unwashed ass. I'm unsubscribing. I mean, I've been unsubscribed for a while. And it 
been one of the best unsubscribings I've ever had in my life. Star Wars is literally a franchise about politics, laser swords, and Jar Jar Binks. How the fuck can you think this is like the worst thing ever? I don't get it. I know that they're really... Again, like... It, if it's not what you don't like, it's not what you don't like. Again, I don't think you should go into a show or a movie or whatever with something with thoughts in mind of how you, it should be how you want it to be, right? It's different for Star Wars Theory, I feel, because it's literally in his name, Theory. It's kind of what you think is going to happen. You're theorizing as to what's going to happen. Um, but, again, like... <sighs> The story is the story. If you don't like the story, you're more than welcome to say you don't like the story. Just don't attack people over it. It really doesn't do much to unsubscribe from a channel that has as much traction as yours. But fuck it. I don't care. You suck and you're annoying. Do better. Bye. All right. So that's that'll do it for that. Um, That was like the least progressive video. I wasn't I wasn't expecting all that. I thought they were going to say what's going on with star Wars theory and then, and then give their opinions on the situation. So that, that wasn't anything at all as to what I thought it was going to be, but I, <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Uh, yeah. My thing is if you like something, talk it up. If you don't like something, you're more than welcome to voice your displeasures with it. Like we should be uh, contrary to popular belief or what a lot of, big star Wars creators are saying who like love everything that come out about star Wars. You should be able to talk about what you don't like about star Wars so that hopefully it gets back in a respectful, calm, but passionate way. Voice it. So it can hopefully get back to some of the people at Disney, which it probably never will. And they can know, Hey, the fans didn't like this. Let's take a beat, figure out what's going on. Right. But if you're blindly just saying, oh, I love everything about everything and nothing's nothing's wrong, da, 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 you're going to keep getting the wrong stuff and it's going to keep pissing people off. Um, but again, my opinion on The Acolyte is it could have been better. It was what it was. I'm not going to go back to watching it. Um, but I'm definitely not going to make like a, a, a four minute, 40 second video shitting on one creator because like, yes, he's the biggest Star Wars channel on YouTube next to the actual official Star Wars channel. But I don't know, like, this, I'm sorry, this video wasn't what I thought it was going to be, and it had a lot of takes, not a, to me, a lot of, a lot of weird takes, like, again, saying, don't expect perfection, Star Wars isn't perfect, it's, it's anything but, and then saying, well, you want to go to Gordon Ramsay's burger joint, and, you know, when you're expecting perfection, then shit on it, like, I, and then says you're going to get suplex if you would, which would be this, I don't understand what that was, this was a weird video, that's the reaction. I'll see you in the next one.